The Scuttlebutt is proud to welcome Millerstown Pick Apart, a self-service salvage yard where you can get parts you need for your car, truck, or van at very attractive prices because you do the work. Bring your own wrenches, hammers, screwdrivers, sockets, jacks, drills, or whatever you need, except for torches, to wrestle out the parts you need for the vehicles in the yard. Millerstown Pick Apart was created 17 years ago to provide reasonably priced solutions for auto parts needs. Millerstown is the perfect fit for those seeking discount auto parts to repair their own vehicles. Millerstown has a huge inventory of cars, which they purchase from individuals, towing companies, and auctions, and from its sister auto salvage recycling operation. For hours, directions, inventory, parts availability, and pricing, you can go to pickapartyard.com. That's P-I-C-A-P-A-R-T-Y-A-R-D, pickapartyard.com or call 724-224-4777. That's pickapartyard.com or call 724-224-4777. It's awesome. I mean, there's so many great opportunities. There's nothing else like it in the entire school that you can do that'll give you the life skills and the, the knowledge that you learn from taking JRDC. Welcome everyone to another episode of The Scuttlebutt. My name is Sean Hall. I'm the Director of Programming with the Veterans Breakfast Club, whose mission is to create communities of listening around veterans and their stories to connect, educate, heal, and inspire. The Scuttlebutt is here to understand military culture from a civilian perspective, being myself. Um, and I'm really excited about the episode today and our guests. We are going to be talking about JROTC, which many of you may have heard about, uh, I know I heard about it when I was in high school, but didn't know much about it. Uh, so we have two cadets here and two instructors, and I'm going to go around the room and let everybody introduce themselves in a second, but please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell on YouTube so you are the first to know whenever we release new episodes. And if you like what you're hearing or you have uh, ideas for a future scuttlebutt, please feel free to reach out to me at Sean, that's S-H-A-U-N, at Veterans Breakfast Club. Dot org, uh, or leave a comment in YouTube. Uh, we always like to get feedback and we always like to read them here on the Scuttlebutt. So uh, thank you again for joining us. And uh, I want to thank you to all of our guests today on the Scuttlebutt for coming on the program to talk about JROTC. Uh, let's go around the room. Everybody can introduce themselves. We'll start with the instructors. Uh, Chief Terry Spear, welcome to the, to the Scuttlebutt. I'm Chief Terry Spear. I'm an uh, Air Force Junior ROTC instructor here at North Allegheny, and I've been doing this here for about five years. Uh, prior to this, I taught at uh, Plum Senior High School, same program, Air Force Junior ROTC, for uh, eight years, and I'm a retired Air Force uh, E9 Chief Master Sergeant. I've, uh, I started my career in the Air Force in 1979 as a security policeman. I uh, was a security policeman and later security forces uh, for 16 years with uh, services in uh, Desert Storm, in, uh, in um, Bosnia, and other places uh, around the world. I've been stationed in um, Italy, Germany. Uh, I was in Denmark for a few months. Um, I've been all over the United States um, and doing those different things. Um, I was also an Air Force First Sergeant for six years and then retired as a command chief master sergeant at the 92nd Air Refueling Wing in Spokane, Washington uh, in 2005. So I did 26 years of service, uh, active duty uh, in the military and enjoyed every single moment of it. That's great. Um, thank you, Terry. Uh, Don Accomando, yeah. welcome to the Scuttlebutt. Uh, could you introduce yourself? Go ahead. Don Accomando, um, retired Lieutenant Colonel um, from the Air Force, um, a Pittsburgh guy, um, went to the University of Pittsburgh, and after leaving Pitt with a degree in secondary education, which I'll get to in a minute, um, we went into the Air Force and, um, you know, spent 28 years, uh, uh, much like the chief, a couple decades of service in uniform, um, various uh, capacities, uh, much like uh, Kenna, I started my career in operations where I was a navigator on a KC-135 for many years, uh, moved into uh, evaluation and training in operations. Um, then um, as a navigator, um, I, I fond memories of my uh, former wing commander asked me if I knew what GPS stood for. Um, and I told him global positioning. And he said, now nah, gone pretty soon for the navigator. <laughs> so I had to um, transition to a different line of work. Uh, he sent me to maintenance school. I became a maintenance officer. Shortly after that, I diversified into the logistics field. I was a logistics commander, 
and then eventually migrated my way to the uh, wing headquarters. So I have a broad brush stroke and understanding of uh, the different um, departments within the Air Force. Uh, and even to Josie's point, uh, I went to uh, uh, Fort Meade and it was a DINFO's uh, public affairs officer. So I even had some experience down there. We'll have to talk about that later. But as I mentioned, uh, after retiring from the Air Force in 2010, 11 years ago, I went to work at Duquesne University where I started helping transitioning veterans as they go to college. So I continued my work in education. And then upon hearing about uh, Major Kolar's departure from the North Allegheny program, investigated the opportunity to come here and exercise that secondary degree that I picked up at Pitt. And here I am, my first year, uh, and I'm looking so forward to uh, meeting Josie and Ken and the rest of the cadet corps uh, on, you know, in person on Monday. So that's a little bit about me. Monday coming up, which actually this episode will be released the following Monday. So uh, everybody will have met by then, but let's go over to our cadets now. Josie, if you'd like to introduce yourself, welcome to the Scuttlebutt. Hi, my name is Josie Olmstead. I am gonna be a junior at North Allegheny and I, it is my third year in the North Allegheny Air Force Junior ROTC. Um, I'm a second lieutenant and I have enjoyed every single minute of my JROTC experience. It has been absolutely the best decision I've ever made to take this course, and I would highly recommend it to anyone else who's thinking about it. Awesome. I'm going to come back to that, Josie, because uh, I'm going to learn more about why you decided to join Junior ROTC. And last but certainly not least, Mackenzie Shannon, or Kenna uh, for short, uh, welcome to the Scuttlebutt. Hi, I'm Kenna Shannon. Um, this is going to be my third year in JROTC. Um, I recently graduated from the Flight Academy at Maryland Eastern Shores this summer. It was by far the best summer of my entire life. Um, and I couldn't have done it without ROTC and everybody supporting me throughout my journey there. And you just got your pilot's license, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's what correct. Were you, what were you flying over there? Uh, uh, Cessna's uh, 172S's, G1000's. So They're... not quite the F-22 Raptor behind Ch Terry just yet? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the goal. That's the goal. Next, um, I'm in the middle of applying for the Air Force Academy and the Naval Academy right now. Um, and I'm looking to their sports programs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very it. nice. And <laughs> excellent. Good luck. Um, so moving on into our, our sort of main story, junior ROTC, uh, I thought we'd start with a little bit of uh, history, a little bit of background on what it is and how it came about. Uh, Terry, do you have a little bit of background for us about how this program came about for, across the country and really around the world? Well, and junior ROTC it itself is uh multi-service. There are um, Army Junior ROTC programs, there are Navy Marine Corps Junior ROTC pro programs, and there are Air Force Junior ROTC programs. And, and it started, you know, not, not to, to go into great detail, but by an Army Lieutenant uh, uh, back in the early 1900s when it, it, he, he noticed that he needed, uh, that students needed a little bit more information and a little more education about their country and its purpose and its greatness and, uh, and develop citizens uh, of, of great character that they were trying to do. So started in the early 1900s with, uh, with the Army. And then uh, in 1967, the United States Air Force uh, started programs uh, around the world. And, um, and, and including when I say around the world, I mean in Air Force installations in different parts of the world that have uh, active duty members and their families when they have high schools there. So um, here at North Allegheny, we were one of the very first um, schools to get it in 1967. In fact, we just celebrated our 50th uh, anniversary a few years ago, and we've been in continuous operation here for over 50 years. And so you, there are over 900 of these uh, organizations in high schools uh, worldwide currently. And can you talk to me a bit about how Junior ROTC has changed over the years? Well, I think that um, for me, uh, it's not changed a whole lot, but uh, there have been, have been some changes uh, on how it's managed. It used to be managed from the local level, and there were, there were people that um, 
uh, retired military people and civilians who would uh, manage the program. They also used to manage it from local Air National Guard uh, or military installations. But now um, it has changed and there's actually a department uh, at Maxwell Air Force Base. They call it the Home Center. It's about um, uh, the mission there is officer session, but we fall up under there with, uh, with our sister program, ROTC, that you mentioned earlier, an ROTC college program that uh, that's focused on commissioning officers uh, at the college level. And that's what they focus on. That's the pathway to commissioning or one of the pathways to commissioning. The junior ROTC program is not a pathway to commissioning hmm. at all. Uh, it, there, there's no obligation to join. Uh, there's no expectation. Uh, teachers, uh, the, the colonel and I, uh, instructors, are not here to, to recruit people into the military. In fact, uh, we've, we kept some statistics over the years, and there, there really is not any more of a percentage of people coming from our program and entering the military than there is in the overall student population of schools. So if, if I have 20 seniors and five of them go uh, in the military in some capacity, whether it's enlisted or officers, typically that same percentage you can find in the school population that is not in junior ROTC. Mm -hmm. So we, so, so if we're, if our mission was to recruit, recruit students in the student body into the military, we're doing a poor job. We're, we're not recruiters. We're here to make sure to, that we educate kids about being good citizens and have, and being citizens of character that are dedicated to serving their nation and community. That's what it's all about. That's a really uh, that's a really great distinction to make because my understanding of JROTC was that it it leads to military service. Um, you know, this is such an important mission, I think, especially nowadays, uh, with uh, helping our youth to to understand service to the country and service to their community uh, will yes. make a better country overall. Um, can you talk to me about um, Don or, or or Terry the the four part model of JROTC? Like, what 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 are we teaching them overall? Air Force Junior RTC is, uh, it actually has three parts. It's a uh, 40% aerospace science, and that's things like science of flight. Um, and we also teach a component on, on uh, world cultures that it deals with the perspective of, uh, of um, what the nation is trying to do in these different parts of the world and how America associates with us. Rather than the history of the, of the different cultures, there is some of that, but it's about, um, uh, national strategy and things like that. We also have um, uh, space science and different parts of the curriculum that associate with aerospace science. So it's 40% aerospace science, 40% leadership education, which is about citizenship. Uh, it's about character. It's about leadership. It's about all of those things rolled up into one. We wear a military uniform once a week, the kids, the students, where uh, where that military uniform, there are different and, and various military uniforms that they can wear. Uh, Josie has one on. I think is that your service dress uniform, Josie? Uh, and then Kenna has uh, a flight suit on that the cadets are authorized to wear once they are licensed pilots. We also wear the 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 ABUs and the, the Air Force is transitioning into um, OCPs and. We'll get those soon. So there are different uniforms that they wear. And the, and, the, and the lesson there is about attention to detail and about taking pride in the way you look and, and those kinds of things. So there's a leadership education component that's also 40%. And then the rest of it, the other 20% is about wellness and where we teach the cadets about taking care of themselves, both physically, mentally, spiritually, um, so that they can be the best person that they can possibly be for their country. So that's how it's broken down, Sean, 40, 40, 20. Mm -hmm. um, and then outside of the, the classroom, the typical day, the cadets involve themselves in almost anything they want to. Uh, but there's a lot of leadership components. We call them LDRs that, that they involve themselves in. Uh, they make those choices. Um, they, and we uh, facilitate those choices for them. So he, the great part about this is that anywhere you go in the United States, you can go pick and go visit an Air Force Junior ROTC, and they're never going to look the same. There's going to be a common element. They're going to be wearing military uniforms, Air Force uniforms. The cadets are be in charge of the program, run it, manage it, lead it. Uh, the, the instructors facilitate it, and they're there for adult supervision and teaching. Um, and those are the common things. But every other thing about it is going to look a little bit different depending on where they 
are in the personalities of the cadets and instructors. So it's a really unique program. And it's a it's a elective program like art or like industrial arts or like anything else that the that the students can take. Any student can take the class as long as they're willing to meet the standards of appearance and wear the uniform appropriately. I'm going to get back to the standards, but I know that we are going to lose Kenna uh, in just a little bit. So I want to jump over to Kenna uh, and get a bit of uh, your background, Kenna, why you decided to join uh, Junior ROTC, uh, what your parents think. Um, give me a bit of background as to what led you to the decision. So I joined JROTC my 10th grade year. Ninth grade, I was thinking about it, um, but I didn't know that much about it, the program, and I was still trying to decide what I wanted to do, what I wanted to major in um, until my ninth and 10th grade year in the summer, ninth to 10th grade year, um, there was a cadet that graduated. She's at the Air Force Academy right now. Jetta, who always came to soccer practice talking about how amazing JROTC was. And um, I was planning on going into the army at the time into mm -hmm. My parents found out and my dad told me to think about going into the Air Force. Um, he was in the Air Force. He was a mechanic. He uh, joined when he was 17. Mm -hmm. So when I first told my parents, they were a little surprised because I was five foot and weighed like 95 pounds. I was just this little, little girl. Um, and I went from wanting to be a vet to a pilot really quick, <laughs> but uh, I really fell in love with the program. Like everybody was so sweet and so kind. Uh, I was a little nervous because I showed up to class. And I was the only girl in mm -hmm. tenth grade, but now they're all my best friends, and I have learned a lot from this program, and it has rewarded me in so many ways. Uh, lead me through those first couple of days in, in whenever you joined up. Uh, what was it like sort of onboarding? So I first walked in and all the boys, like they all knew each other. And um, I kind of just sat in the back, kept my mouth shut, and didn't really know what was going on mm -hmm. um, until we started doing like, I think like what really helped me like bond with like the class was when our first fitness day, we went out and played football. And I think they were expecting me to kind of just stand in the corner, but that didn't happen. <laughs> um, it was it was a lot of fun. And it is very nervous at first because I joined a year late compared to some other kids. Mm -hmm. um, it really didn't affect me in the end because if you want to make a difference in ROTC and if you want to help change the program, benefit the program, and you dedicate yourself to it, you can no matter how long you've been there for. Just to have a, a, a conversation with Ken, I have, I have a question for you. you Kenny, you mentioned something that's really, really important about educating people and about what junior art is, is people think that you're going to come here. And I think kids do too. You're going to come here. We're going to yell at you. We're going to be real strict disciplinarians. That like we're drill instructors. Great drill instructors. And they were going to yeah. You can do push-ups and and all those kinds of things, and the, and really, you know, that McKenna's illustration of what she experienced was completely different from that because that's that's the way it is. You know, yeah. we have kinds of different people in our program, and they come together. And I mean, we have our, we're a family. We have our issues back and forth a little bit, but that's what the way they feel coming out, mm -hmm. right? They, feel like, hey, I'm part of something that's making a difference in my life, but it's also making a difference in other people's lives. And it's a friendly, cohesive environment, right? So, and I'm, I'm sure Josie has similar experiences with what, what, what happened to her as well. So thanks for bringing that up, Kenna. That's, that was a really good illustration of what junior ROTC is. Yeah. And there's a bit of competitiveness that comes into play here because there's a lot of, what I've read is there's a lot of competitions in JROTC. Uh, is that the same in Air Force? Junior ROTC, as did they do it across the board? Marine, Army, same same thing. Um, I think the only time I really got competitive was when we were interviewing for staff positions, and even then we were all sitting out in the hallway waiting to go do our interviews, and I didn't feel scared or or worried because I had my friends backing me up. Mm -hmm. um, 
My one friend, me and him, we were both going for the same position and the entire time we were just talking about, oh, what would they ask? Um, how would you react to it? We, it got to the point where we weren't competing, but we were supporting each other, even mm -hmm. though we were going for the same position. And I think it, there's more support than competitiveness in JROTC. Okay. Um, leadership is something we talk about a lot on the Scuttlebutt. In fact, for those of you in the audience have continued to follow the Scuttlebutt, you'll have heard last week uh, from Zach Knight, uh, a veteran, um, also a veteran of SWAT. Um, you know, leadership was a, a big deal to him. Uh, Kenna, talk me through a little bit about what you've learned about leadership over the years. I've learned a lot from leadership, both in the classroom and out of it, um, that it's someone, leaders are people that you look up to. They're people that have character and they might not always do the right thing, but they're doing, they're making decisions to help benefit the team as a whole. And I know the past two commanders, I've looked up to them. I have respected them. Um, and when you say commander, you mean like a student commander? Yeah. Okay. Yes, correct. Um, I honestly, I think a leader is someone that both has character and just that you're just, there's some people that are just natural born leaders. They, they are not followers. Um, and I think ROTC really breeds a lot of leaders out of this program. Josie, I'm hoping that you're taking notes on all my questions because these are going to be brought to you as well. But, um, you know, Kenna, whenever Terry and Don talked a bit about their service, now we're talking over 50 years of experience in the military. What does that mean to you when you when you hear about that those decades that they served in the military and, and what they bring to the table as your instructors? I am grateful and impressed that they served for 50 years. And when I think about my future and 50 years down the line, it it sounds very exciting to me. It doesn't sound like like I'm going to be worried or scared of it because when I was flying this summer, uh, time really flies when you're flying the plane. Um, and Unintended. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and honestly, if I get to do that for 50 years, I'm not complaining. Mm -hmm. And if I get to lead and um, instruct people and help people get to where I am at, it really mm -hmm. sounds amazing to me. How have you taken the leadership qualities that you have learned and, and used them in the classroom, at home, uh, with, with uh, would you say, and this is a term that I need to learn, is uh, if you are the commander, who is underneath you? Is, are those your cadets or your team? I like to think of them as my team, honestly, yeah. um, because everybody really helps and looks out for each other. And um I just, I feel like it's not just me. I'm not, I'm like, yes, like I might be the commander, but there's so many other people that lead and look out for each other and they are changing ROTC altogether. It's not, it's not just me. Like Josie has helped out so much this year. When I was gone this summer, she really helped out. Like I was stressed out at flight school and I, I really enjoyed like looking to her and having her as like, someone that like, hey, like, I can't do this right now. Like, can you help me? And she really would. And then other cadets, like I, it was nice, like passing on responsibility and sharing responsibility for a lot of stuff. John, John if I can interject here too. Of course. One of the things you talked about and asked about earlier was about competition. Mm -hmm. And this is why I love the program because, you know, you ask a question like that and I'm thinking, okay, so what's gonna, what's gonna happen here? Um, but I don't worry about it because I know these cadets have the right answers. And it was just a really great answer. And here's what it illustrates to me. You, you talk about competition and Kenna brings up competing for different leadership positions that everyone wants. That mirrors our United States Air Force. The, the promotion system, the positional system is competitive. There can only be one chief master sergeant of the Air Force. There can only be one chief of staff of the Air Force. And there are a lot of wonderful, amazing people out there that lead who could do those jobs. And, and they're competing for those things. But once that competition's over, we're one team. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah, yes, everybody would love to be a general or the, lots of people would like to be these, but there's only so many, not everybody can be that. So the, the competition's there, 
but we all lift each other up to make ourselves better airmen overall, big letter A airmen for the United States Air Force. And that's yeah. what they're doing as cadets. They're, they're competing, making themselves better, lifting each other up, making a better program. And I guess I should clarify also that, that the competition that may uh, be involved uh, inside each school, are there competitions between schools on a national level? Um, yes, there is. And I learned a lot um, from other ROTC programs this summer, and I do want to take some of their, um, their ideas or the way that they influence their ROTC program at their school and kind of influence it on ours because a lot of kids, uh, there's this Raider program at our school and um, we have uh, like color guard and like drill and so many, they, you compete with other schools and um, I know that they told me that yes, when you're competing with the other school, but you're, it's like they're your ROTC family too. Like you're not, it's not like when you walk onto like a soccer field or something and like right. your team, it's mm -hmm. just like, that's my competitor and you respect them because they're, their beliefs are the same as yours. You are working together. Um, Kenna, before we leave you, I want to, I want to get this question to you and, and Josie, I'll be interested in your thoughts uh, a little bit later here on the program. Um, a stat that I read is that 40% of all cadets across junior ROTC are female. Um, that, that kind of surprised me. That's a great number. What does it mean to you uh, to be a female in junior ROTC and be a part of that great statistic? Um, I honestly, I wish that more women would join ROTC. I think a lot of them think it might be just for a boy or just a boys class. But um, over the summer, I was in my graduating class, there was seven girls out of 18 people. And uh, total kids that were accepted into the scholarship program, it was 377, but only 300 graduated with their private pilot's license. And actually, it was the most women that graduated over boys, hmm. which I was so excited and so happy about. Um, there were some colleges that had just girls, and um, I think... I don't know, like girl power, I guess. Like, I'm glad that women are starting to realize that it's not just a boy's job or it's not just a man's job to be in the military. Girls can do whatever guys can do. And I'm glad that this year, like, um, I'm commander. I know a couple boys in the class were a little, like, like a little weird, like they were surprised, but, um, because they might have been there longer than me, but um, I don't like to think about that, like girls and boys, like, yes, like. like there's some, no verses. There's, yeah, there's still the there's team. There's no verses. Everybody starts in the same place when they join ROTC, uh, no matter the gender. And it's who you are and who, and who you choose to be that is what gets you to your position not if you're a boy or girl. Uh, and one last question, Kenna, before, uh, before you have to go, if, if you have time, mm -hmm. um, yeah. where do you plan to go from here? You're going into your senior year. Um, are, you know, you're, you're hoping to enlist in the Air Force? So I am in the middle of applying for the Air Force and the Naval Academy right now, along with other colleges that have ROTC programs. So if I were not to get into the um, Air Force Academy or Naval program, uh, Navy Academy, I would... Uh, go to these colleges that offer these ROTC programs and then go into the Air Force. Um, my goal is to be a pilot um, because I'm not giving up on flying now. I'm hooked. I love it. Um, and it is a lot of hard work. I think that over the summer, this was the hardest I've ever worked for something before. And there are times like where you do, like you get hit by a wall and you just want to get up, give up, not get up. But then you think about the reward at the end of the day. Like I was flying every single day and I think mm -hmm. that pushed me like, this is what you want in 30 years and 40 years. That's awesome. That's great foresight to have. Um, 
uh, for my for my scuttlebutt audience that, that have gotten to know me over the course of the years, I got to fly co-pilot a, a little Cessna but the one. If you're on YouTube, you can see behind Don. I did that down in Kitty Hawk years ago. Um, I had a great time doing it on my own, you know, or as co-pilot. Uh, and then I found out a week later that the Cessna actually went down. They landed it on a highway, saved the family, oh like gosh. the engine went out. Scary stuff. But uh, Kenna, please remember me uh, when you get to the Air Force, because I have a bucket list item that I always wanted to fly in, a, you know, an F-18 or F-22. So if, if you have a co-pilot seat available, please look me up. Uh, my wife would kill me, but I just want to do one of those straight up takeoffs. It just, yeah. oh man, I get chills thinking about it. Yeah. Um, but uh, Kenna, thank you so much for coming on the Scuttlebutt. We're going to continue on with the program here. Uh, any well, final thank words? Thank you for having me. Of course. Yeah. Um, Absolute pleasure and an honor. Well, thank you. Have a nice day. You as well. Thanks, Kenna. See you Bye, Monday. Thank you. See you Monday. Monday, start school. God, I oh, remember man. those days. <laughs> Um, I'm going to, before I get to Josie, I want to, I want to hear all about your story as well. And your thoughts on the, on the same things we talked about with Kenna. Um, uh, before we get to that though, uh, I want to get back to, to Don and Terry just a little bit here, um, to talk to me a, a bit about why you both decided to become instructors. What, what made you decide to go that route with your career after service? Yeah, let me, let me jump in, uh, just to give the chief a break. I know he's been, uh, you know, uh, the master drink of water chief, like <laughs> <laughs> the master teacher for so long, uh, as I pointed out a little earlier, you know, first of all, it's in my DNA. I mean, that was my, um, ambition as a young person was to get into the classroom and work with young people. Uh, but the air force came along, um, and it was a choice, uh, and I was blessed to have a wonderful career. Uh, I, I also picked up a multitude of lessons and instruction as an evaluator and an instructor and other things. So I had the opportunity to, to fine tune my craft um, in education uh, through the Air Force as well. And then obviously working at the university level, um, you know, I have always wanted to work with um, young people in an instructional setting. And um, one thing, and I know Ken hit upon it, the chief touched on it as well, uh, for sure. Um, whether you're, um, whatever your task or uh, specialization in the military is, um, you uh, end up becoming uh, a servant. Um, you've often heard of servant leadership as well, very important component. Um, others before self and service before self. And, and that's really been my motto. Um, you know, I, I kind of followed in my parents' footsteps. I think some of the characteristics uh, they instilled in me uh, of giving back. Um, and it's to your point earlier, Sean, you mentioned, um, you know, and the chief pointed out building, you know, uh, citizens of character. Uh, I think this is an important part and it all feeds into what is the role of junior ROTC um, as providing a way for people to be more engaged with or helping others. And for me, it is all about helping other people. Uh, that's a fantastic point that I do want to hit on here at the end with uh, sort of a last big question I have for you all. Um, but maybe you could take me through uh, how students join Junior ROTC. What are the requirements? And you could lead me through a typical cadet schedule. Okay, so I'll take this one, um, Sean. Their, their requirements are that they have to be a student in this school unless there's a cro an agreement um, with another school for them to come to this school just for junior ROTC. So for example, a local high school, Pine Richland, um, you have to be a student at Pine Richland, ninth through 12th grade. Uh, there's a program right now that a few schools nationwide are, are testing out that uh, they're gonna allow eighth graders to come into the program, but those are very specific things. They have to be co-located uh, in the campus. They can't be bussed in to do it. They have to be there, but there's a handful of, of schools nationwide that are trying that. Mm -hmm. The typically ninth through 12th graders, um, uh, Pine Richland uh, accepts people, uh, students from Mars um, High School, which is not far from them, uh, And but there's an agreement between these two schools about, about that, and they can come over. So ninth through 12th grade, um, they have to be be able or, and willing to uh, meet standards of grooming, uh, wear the uniform, 
other than that. So no mustaches past the side of the mouth, right? Right. And no, right. This, the, right. No mustaches past the side of their beards. But, you know, a lot of that's changing. If you've been following the Air mm-hmm. Force um, military standards, a lot of that for women uh, hairstyles have, are changing. So we just have to keep up with that. And cadets have to keep up with that. They have to be willing to do it. They have to understand and be, and, and uh, that we wear a uniform once uh, a week uh, on a designated day. But otherwise... They, they, they can join. We've had, we had a uh, student that was, um, that was in a wheelchair uh, a few years, a couple of years ago, took the class, um, his uniform on like everyone else, came in, the, in, in his, in his uh, wheelchair, participated, was a great cadet, uh, and graduated this year. So um, we've had, you know, people with other disabilities and other challenges in their life that we embrace and and these these cadets uh, are a valuable part of our organization so in that way there are really very few limitations we're and i mentioned before we are a we're an elective program just like art just like the band just like anything and and if a student comes to north allegheny coming into the ninth grade and wants to take junior rotc we're going to take them mm-hmm. and we're, we're going to do everything we can so that they individually get out of it as much as they possibly can, and what and in their growth, in their individual growth, is every bit as mu- as much as anybody else who who's taking the program. So from that aspect, if you're a student in North Allegheny, ninth through twelfth grade, you can join. You, it's not sequential, so you don't have it's not prerequisite. So if you d- decide not to take it as a ninth grader, and then all of your friends are taking it, you think it's great. You, you've heard a lot of great things, like you heard Kenna say, joined as a sophomore. Um, the Colonel and I were talking today about seniors who say, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, doing this, joining the military. I really like to add leadership to my, to my uh, resume mm-hmm. and college. They can take it as a senior one year. So the, it's a, a lot of people think it's very regimented and in many ways it is, but we're also very flexible in terms of uh, what the students do, and what they can take. What, what's the typical schedule for a cadet? Well, they come to class just like again, like like we're an art class or we're like a like a gym class. They come. Our our particular schedule is traditional schedule. We have nine periods a day here at North Allegheny Intermediate, mm-hmm. and they come they come into class. Uh, the bell rings. We have student leadership. The flight commander will get up in front of everybody and call the room to attention. Uh, they take roll by elements. They'll ask for the element leader to. To report and they report the um, the students in in terms of attendance. Uh, then we have a public affairs representative for each of the flights and they talk about the what's going on in junior ROTC. And then uh, we come out. Sometimes we do ROTC business where we're talking about personnel records and updating things. Uh, other times it's uh, act strictly academic. Uh, whether it's we're teaching them science of flight or uh, communication skills or leadership or uh, uh, colonels teaching survival. From, directly from the the SEER class uh, academy oh, wow. up, at, up at Fairchild, we teach the same manual. Uh, Drop the kids off in the middle of North Park and say, we, you know, we find your way to the Starbucks." And <laughs> no, actually, uh, we you know, when I was at Plum, we we did a, a similar uh, exercise with kids who were taking survival. So yeah, there's a lot of that uh, that we that we do, and uh, those kinds of skills um, that they learn in that. So, uh, but a typical day is is like. A, a traditional student. One time a week, though, they they wear a uniform to class. Um, there's inspections. We do drill, so they learn the drill and ceremony, basic drill and ceremony in class. Um, uh, so in class, between you know seven twenty in the morning and uh, fourteen fifteen to fifteen in the afternoon, um, they they're going to class just like anything else. They leave our class and they may go to math or science or 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 the band or whatever they might do, just like a, like a regular student does. Only once a week they have a uniform on when they do it. Great. Josie, let's bring you into the, the conversation here. Sorry, it's taken a, a hot minute to, to get over to, to your story, but um, let's, let's wind back the clock a bit and talk me through uh, what brought you to Junior ROTC and, and uh, why were you excited to join it? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't even know about the program until I was scheduling with my guidance counselor in eighth grade, and I had a spot to fill in my schedule, and I needed another elective, but nothing really sounded all that interesting, and she told me about JRTC, 
and I was like, huh, like, I'll try it out. Like, I just needed something to fill my schedule, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was really just to, like a credit. Um, but yeah. Are, so. you, is, are your parents, were they in the military? Um, my dad was in the Marines for a short time. He was supposed to go to sniper school, but then my mom got pregnant with me and she made him drop out. <laughs> so she what didn't if, want him to like get killed or something. I don't know. But yeah, no, that's so. a very, very real uh, concern. Definitely. Um, yeah. uh, so it's interesting because a lot of the stats that show people that go into and enlist in the military, a lot of them have military history in their families. So what did they think whenever you said, yeah, I'm going to join J junior ROTC? Were they like, whoa, are you, you thinking about enlisting or what are you thinking about? Um, well, they were really excited for me. They think it's a great like leadership opportunity, obviously. Um, but more of the military background in my family is with my grandparents. So mm -hmm. like my grandfather on my mom's side, um, he flew planes in Vietnam. He has a purple heart. Mm -hmm. um, my great grandfather on my dad's side jumped on D-Day and was taken a prisoner of war and actually wow. made it back to tell the story and everything. So we do have a lot of military pride in my family, even though my dad didn't serve for that long and my mom wasn't in the military. Um, so they were extremely supportive and they were really excited that I was gonna participate in the program. Well, we just passed the 101st Airborne birthday. Mm -hmm. um, are, are your grandparents still with us? Um, my grandfather is, yes. My, grand, my great grandfather died when I was about two. Okay. So. Um, well, jumping on D-Day is, uh, there, yeah. there's a oh, man, <laughs> those types of things just sort of blow your mind whenever you think about them. Um, yeah. So uh, talk me through what your process has been through the years that you've been in, in junior ROTC. How has it been for you sort of uh, working your way up? I'm guessing that the rank structure, you still have to sort of work through that. Is that correct? Yeah, well, it's been difficult with COVID. We haven't had as much like leadership and volunteer opportunities to be promoted and everything. I just got yeah. promoted to second lieutenant. Actually, I just put my ranks on today. Congrats. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but yeah, so I've been working myself up just, I was flight commander for a little bit last year, which is just like each of our classes are called flights and each class will have a commander that takes attendance and everything and like kind of leads the class. And then the core has another bigger commander, mm -hmm. but I was um, flight commander for a little while last year. And the year before that I was in charge of like elements and different things, but I've always like considered myself to be a little bit more of a leader within my class, just someone that like people look up to, um, just because I do have so much pride in this program. And I think people respect that. Are there different paths that you can take? Like you're a public affairs officer. Does everybody go through that same rank structure or that same, uh, would you say MOS? Um, I mean, no, you don't have to go through that way. Usually people will have some leadership positions before they just become core commander. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of just, you can do as much or as little as you want. Like there's so many opportunities that it's kind of hard to not be involved before you get a position like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you just, like I said, like, like how I joined, just need a credit on your schedule and just need a schedule filler, then that class can be this too. So it's really up to the cadet for how much or how little they want to do for the core. Well, Josie, can you, you, the process though, about how you became, I think would interest people. Um, you, the cadet rank structure, as you see on her uh, lapel, mm -hmm. is different than Air Force, right? So the Air Force officer rank is a is way different than what you have there, and that's done purposefully because we don't want them confused, at, you know, being real commissioned officers. Uh, the enlisted look similar from E1 through E9, uh, Airman through Chief looks similar, but it's not the same, and you also pin them on there. And we have a process that we use for promotion on a quarterly basis based on, like, jo like Josie said, the involvement of the cadet. And I, what, I, what I think what she said was very important. You get what you put into it. You get out of it what you put into it. You do, you, you do work, you get promoted. You do a good job, you get promoted. So you, you look at people who are promoted like Josie thinks she's really been involved and done a lot of things, right? It's about community service and and leadership and all those kinds of things. But the process of Josie, if you could explain for officers and how you got selected to be public affairs, I think might interest the, how involved the cadet leadership and cadets are in, in, in you being where you are, that process. Yeah, I mean, so we also. have interviews every year. We have, a, we have a change of command. So the previous command staff, which is like the commander, public affairs and everyone below um, the commander, 
they all interview the new command staff. So the new people who would like to apply for positions can come in and they will wear their uniform and stand at a podium and they'll be interviewed by the command staff. And it's, it's really student run. There's not a lot of instructor involvement, um, but you go in and you interview and then you get an email a few days later if you got the position or not. And then we also have like staff meetings afterwards. There's a whole change of command ceremony, which unfortunately we didn't get to do this year because of COVID. But under normal circumstances, there would be a change of command ceremony where the previous command staff would kind of pass the torch to the new one. Um, so it's kind of, it's very student led and very like, oriented towards the kids and teaching them how to interview and how to write a resume and everything like that, which is there's really a, great. Th from what you're saying, there's a big level of ownership that you all uh, take as a part of this. Like you're given the responsibility, taught how to lead, but you have to take ownership of this. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a huge responsibility that I know that our entire command staff takes a lot of pride in. Um, so it's really, it's kind of our reputation. It's like, yeah. like we are leading the core. Like if things go bad, like people look to us for what to do. So it's really our reputation and our name that's on the line if something goes wrong or anything. Um, so. Uh, I wanna get to my next question here in a minute, but uh, Dawn, thank you for the correction here in the chat here on, on the Zoom side. Uh, for those just listening on audio, I said MOS, but in the Air Force, from what you say, Don, uh, they refer to jobs as AFSC, uh, Air Force Specialty Codes. Um, yes. So that's something, you know, I talked to so many veterans over the last year, but a lot of them will say like, well, I was in the Air Force. I have no idea what was going on in the Army side. Um, right. I, it's a real like, as, a, as, a, as a, uh, an employee of VBC, I try to know what's going on in all of the branches. It's nearly impossible. Um, but you're right. AFSC is the job codes for the Air Force. Got it straight. Um, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, and hopefully I won't get too many emails uh, about, hey, MOS is not in the Air Force. Um, Josie, uh, learning about leadership, taking this ownership, uh, becoming commander or, or gaining rank, how do you um, help pick up your, your fellow cadets? If, if someone in the class maybe is uh, slacking off is, I, I guess, the term I would use, um, how do you help pick them up? Say, hey, we're, we're all in this together. Uh, let's get on the uh, on the on the same page. Yeah, well, I I really believe that a leader is someone that doesn't so much tell people what to do, but it makes them the a, a true leader makes people want to do well on their own. So, like I know with Chief, like I look up to Chief so much, and his leadership makes me really want to excel in this program and do my best to get as much out of it as I possibly can. Um, so I just. I don't so much tell people what to do and kind of like try and get them back on track just because that's not really my place. If mm -hmm. someone wants to be on track and wants to do a lot for the core, then they will. And we have a lot of cadets that really do that. And they really believe in what this core has to offer and what it stands for. Um, so we don't, I mean, at least I haven't seen a huge problem with people slacking off. Obviously there's a couple just it's high school, but um, I mean, I, I try to be someone that people can look up to and see as like, she's really successful in the core. And like, I, I, like, I want to be that successful too someday. So lead by example, that people see that. Nice. That's a really, jo really fantastic answer. Go ahead, Terry. And Josie is the example. She really is about what a cadet can be. And, uh, and, and she's right. Other people notice that and it's difficult. And I'm, and I, and I liked what she said, Hey, it's high school. Because people, <laughs> it is high school. And what, if you listen to her though, this is a remarkable, remarkable part for me about junior ROTC. If you listen to her, how she talks, what she's talking about, if you listen to Kenna and the things that she said, for those people who are listening to this podcast who were in the military, doesn't it sound familiar to you? The, Josie, how old are you? I am 16. She's 16, right? Okay, so for those of you who are sitting out there thinking that the that the next generation is going to, you know, destroy the world, listen to what this we young... We might. Don't talk. make any assumptions yet. <laughs> hey, okay. I, I need to have my turn. Let me have my turn. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's like, you know, we, we all get caught up in that and you think, oh, these... But listen to how they talk. Doesn't it sound familiar? And, you know, and it's... I, I'm so proud of them. And, I, and, and what's a wonderful thing about this program, and, and I know the colonel's going to experience this, is... 
all of the people that are out there doing different things. We were just talking about this today about having an alumni tracking thing about, but you, I was talking to, somebody called me yesterday, um, one of my former students from Plum, he is a, he pilots drones out of, out of Las Vegas. And he was saying how excited he was about what he was doing. And we have another one, another person out there that's, that it's a weapon systems officer uh, on a similar uh, mission. And just to hear what they're doing and excited about doing, and it's not just about the military. We, we had a, one of our previous core commanders that was running Tomorrowland at Disney. She was running Tomorrowland at Disney. So every time I went to Disney, I'd call Chelsea and she'd meet me under the Tomorrowland. And, it would, and she was in charge of, Disney, of that part of Disney. And when people would ask her, where did you get this experience to know how to do that? She'd say, ah, Air Force Junior ROTC. It just makes me so proud to be part of just a small part of that. And it, and so, you, you know, you asked uh, the Colonel earlier why he joined. I had no idea. I had never taught high school before, um, but I just wanted to be part of this uniform and part of this, you know, experience. And it's been incredible over the last 14 years to, to think about the things that I was that I was able to be a part of. So that speaks that's, it speaks highly to your leadership style, Terry. Uh, and uh, you make me wish that when I was in eighth grade, I would have met someone like you to say you should join Junior ROTC and uh, and gain some experience because it seems like uh, you're getting a lot of real world experience well before graduating high school um, because of what. Uh, the curriculum is is about in junior ROTC. I'm really inspired by this. Well, the great thing about it is, is that you're not, you know, we, we, the cadets do stuff, right? They, they have responsibility and sometimes they make mistakes. You know, Josie will tell you, but you make mistakes, right? You come in and hey, I made a mistake. I didn't do this or I forgot to do this. Well, you, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself up and you start all over again, right? And you, and you, you get back at it and you, and you see that, you know, your life is not defined by your mistakes, but you learn from them and become a better person for it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we we afford that opportunity for them to do. They're not going to crash any airplanes. They're not going to lose any territory in Afghanistan. They're not going to do anything that's going to harm the national security. And, they're, and they are learning from this as they proceed. And I think that's what, that freedom to do that is, is, is invaluable. Josie, what would you tell a student, eighth grader, who's thinking about joining junior OTC? What, what would be the, the hard truth if you had to straight talk? What would you say to them? Well, I actually just told a lot of them at the activity fair the other week. We had an elective fair and I had a little booth set up to kind of give people information. Um, but I mean, I would really just talk about a lot of our opportunities. You know, when it comes to, when it comes to getting people to join ROTC, if that's what you're referring to, is mm -hmm. you kind of like, you like you tell them about the really great things that people want to do. Like we went to Hawaii a couple of years ago. Um, I'm going to Europe with Chief next summer. We got I I was told about that opportunity through JROTC. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many like opportunities to travel, and I'm I participate in Air Rifle, which is our shooting team. Like we went to Ohio for nationals the other year. Mm -hmm. It was just it's awesome. I mean, there's so many great opportunities. There's drill competitions, there's honor guard, there's raiders, there's all of these different opportunities that you have to participate in team and learn how to become a better leader. And I would just tell kids that it really, it really is a great decision to take this course. And there's, there's nothing else like it in the entire school that you can do that'll give you the life skills and the the knowledge that you learn from taking JRTC. Sean, if we could talk about the elephant in the room real quick, though, because if there are other students out there who may watch this or parents of students who may say, hey, take a look at this. And when they go tell their student, hey, you should join ROTC, junior ROTC at North Allegheny or Pine Ridgeland or West Mifflin or, or Norwin or Plum or any of the other schools in the area or any of the Army programs, they're going to come back and say, mom, I don't want to wear that uniform. <laughs> We have that though, Josie, don't we? I mean, yeah. so what you say about that and your experience in wearing the uniform in school. And I told kids that I, kids asked me about that even at the, at the activities fair. And I said, you know, like, that's just a part of it. I mean, if you weigh the pros and cons, like wearing your uniform, like maybe it's not ideal, but 
And, and the, the non-ideal part of it is you don't get to choose what you want to wear. You don't get to wear your, you know, your jeans and whatever you typically part. But how do you feel when you're wearing that uniform, though, that particular uniform? Well, I would just tell kids that it's, it's, you should feel proud to wear the uniform. I mean, if you weigh the pros and cons of ROTC, you might be embarrassed to wear your uniform, but like in, at the end of the day, like it's a small, like it's a small thing to do for the, for the betterment of yourself and for the core. So, was it easier for you? My, my guess, my point is, is it easier for you now than it was when you first started? Yeah. Why? Because I, yeah, because of, because I've seen all the core has to offer, and I see that it's so worth it to just wear, right. so, wear my uniform one day a week, and then be able to have all these other opportunities pretty much handed to me. I mean, <laughs> right. So let's face it. You know, when you're in ninth grade, Sean, when you come in from the, all of the middle schools, and now you're in like high school, right? And you're a, sh- a freshman. You don't want anybody to look at you. You don't want you just want to. You know, we just kind of want to, you know, melt into the wall. You don't want anybody. So here we are, we have freshmen, and next month they're going to be wearing a uniform, and they're a handful of kids in the entire uniform, entire school wearing a uniform. So it makes you stick out. So it's 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 a process, you know, as we evolve through this core. And so so a ninth grade Josie who might have gone, oh my gosh, I don't want to go and you know go the hallway with my uniform, but now she's confident, she's proud. She's wearing it with, with uh, you know, outstanding pride and she looks great. And that's the evolution of it, right? And not everybody buys in, not everybody, but those, and those people kind of a trade out and say, hey, thanks for the experience, but I'm, I'm not doing this. And they go do something else. And that's okay too. You bring up a really great point, the confidence and the pride that you gain uh, throughout. And, and, and not to dive too, too deep into this, but uh, Don, Terry, your generation, you, you know full well how veterans were treated coming back from Vietnam um, and, and how that has shifted uh, into the post 9-11 generation of veterans. Uh, the Vietnam vets said, never again will, will we be uh, treated this way um, and we're, we're gonna help them. Um, wearing that uniform, Josie, uh, I, I would think, um, shows pride not only in the core, but also uh, it shows pride for the servicemen and women who wear these daily and, and serve the country. Absolutely. And um, I work at Chick-fil-A and this is just a little anecdote from my life, but I work at Chick-fil-A and there's this guy that always comes to the drive through and he served in the Air Force and he's active duty um, serving right now and we do military discounts. And he said, he said, you know, like some, like sometimes I get my military discounts and sometimes I don't. I was like, oh, I don't know why someone wouldn't give you a military discount. I was like, I was like, you totally deserve it. Like, thank you so much for your service. And he was like, yeah, thank you. And then we, we got to talking a little bit and I told him that I was in JRTC and he was just like, so impressed. And he was so happy that, that younger people were taking notice of the military and all of the great things that it has to offer and all of the great aspects of America. And um, I think that just to outsiders who even don't doubt it, it's, it's really, really impressive to veterans and really, it makes them very hopeful that future generations will be a little bit more knowledgeable about um, everything that the military stands for and really how much, how much good they do for our country and the world. Yeah, and, and Sean, if I can jump in real quick, um, um, you know, we, we live in a society in an all volunteer force uh, where, um, you know, 1% of the country, less than one half of 1% actually uh, swear to take the oath to defend the Constitution of the United States and strap on the uniform. 1% of the population. And just think for a minute, if we were in Washington, D.C. or Tampa, Florida, where special ops is, or San Antonio, Texas, or where some of the bases are located, it's not uncommon to see people in uniform. But here in Pittsburgh, even though we have a wonderful and large footprint of Guard and Reserve um, servants, um, you don't see the uniform that often. Um, So in my opinion, um, the junior ROTC program affords others an opportunity to wear a different uniform. It's no different than a football uniform. It's no different than um, a rowing or a soccer uniform. It is a uniform of a different kind. We're just not used to seeing it. And, uh, you know, again, after serving so many years, I can't think of a better piece of fabric to wear on my back 
than the uniform. It's almost like the American flag. And I know most of your listeners, uh, even though they're tuned into that, we're preaching to the choir. So what is the obligation of this 1%? And, and I can't uh, say enough uh, about the chief you know, drilling that home. I mean, you know, we need to wear that uniform and wear it with pride because um, that speaks to our commitment uh, to uh, uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of, the, of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Point, end of discussion. That's all there is to it. Uh, and then, uh, because I know we're probably getting a little short on time, uh, you know, we could have marched anyone in here, I'm sure, from the core. But, you know, you saw two young ladies uh, demonstrate leadership at its best. Look at the things they're taking from uh, what the chief and the major have given them. And you can almost see the trajectory of their growth across the span of three or four years. And it's so impressive to me. And you ask me why I want to be here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> to be a part of this. That's a no-brainer. Um, definitely. One last big question here. Um, uh, we, we chatted about this prior to start starting recording. Is uh, And you brought it up, the all-volunteer force, less than one half of 1% of the U.S. population serves. Uh, one, one thing that has been thrown out there is, should we bring back the draft? We don't have to go dive into that question. Um, but my question sort of pertains to that in the sense that, do you think that junior ROTC should be a requirement in the high school? And if so, do you feel like that would help to instill a pride in uh, national service, in a pride in our serving our communities, uh, and sort of help get us out of a, a little bit of the, the, I would say, pothole that we're in uh, mm -hmm. as a nation? Um, I think that having i don't know if the answer is so much having jrtc be mandatory i think that learning a little bit more about like military pride and pride in our country and social studies classes would be more helpful but really our core is so successful because we have cadets that want to be here and who choose to be here so i don't know if it's so much the answer to make everyone come here that doesn't really want to be here and they're like what's the point of this like this is dumb i don't want to do this I think that it would be more helpful to kind of instill that in our base education system instead of forcing a bunch of kids into something that they don't really want to do. Because that's not going to hit anything home. That's just going to make a bunch of teenagers angry, like, if I'm being no. honest. So, well, I don't I think even, that's like I don't a mic say, drop right there, Josie. A, I, I, I don't even drop. say anything else. Yeah, I just saw so the I, big I, smile I, go across the chief's face like that. Uh, yeah. I don't well need done. to follow that up. I feel the same way. I mean, I, I, I I don't need to say another word, Josie. <laughs> I, I want to pick the mic up, Sean, because <laughs> um, junior ROTC or some other type of service, you know, there has to be some type of contribution for membership in anything. If you want to be part of something, you've got to participate and contribute. So whether it's junior ROTC or whether it's the Peace Corps, or whether it's some service to the uniform in the, in the armed services, you know, Americans have to participate in the process. And I can't think of a better time in our history than this one. You mentioned a pothole. It might be a little bit bigger than a pothole, Sean. It's a touch. It's a yeah. <laughs> so, one of those ones that swallow up buses here in Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, again, I think this is one of those times in our history where building um, contributors to society good citizens who want to be part of something. I mean, that's what we need, as opposed to people, um, you know, taking a back seat. And, and not that I'm accusing anybody of taking a back seat, but I think we need more leaders, more citizens of character today, more than ever. And again, it's a great time for people to get on board with a program like Junior ROTC. And I, I would agree with you, Colonel, about that. And I think that that leads right back to what Josie talked about. And she said, you know, that we have cadets, and we are a successful program because we have cadets here who want to be here. And it's up to us to convince them that this is the place for them. And we, I think we do typically do a very good job of that with our students and, and our visitations to the, the different places. So we educate people about junior ROTC exactly as you stated. But the real crux of it is, is convincing people. And as, again, as Kenna and Josie so eloquently talked about leadership, is not demanding that they do something, but convincing the people to follow you and, and making, that, making that case for service. 
And we need to do that better, not just in high schools, but in colleges and, in, and throughout our communities in America. So it starts with education. Well, this has been uh, a really wonderful conversation. Uh, I've been really inspired, Josie, by both you and Kenna, uh, and and um, really proud of uh, the leadership that's going on over there at North Allegheny for, for Junior ROTC. So I want to thank you guys for, for coming on to the Scuttlebutt this week. Uh, any final thoughts as we, as we sign off here? Welcome to join us. Come out and visit us sometime. Yeah. Absolutely. We would love to have you. And um, I, I, I will tell you that, you know, we talked a lot. Air Force Junior ROTC is a, is a big subject. Uh, but I'll leave you with this. Um, we are a program in a high school. It is Junior ROTC. And uh, it's about leadership, character building. It's about education. And it is um, a wonderful program for high schools to have. And I would encourage you, if your high school doesn't have one, to uh, the way you get one is that you have to ask the Air Force to come and visit you. And that is all done through your leadership uh, at the high school, meaning like your principals your and your superintendent and your school board. That's how you get an Air Force Junior ROTC program. The Air Force, it doesn't go out knocking on doors saying, hey, please take our program. You have to ask for one. And there's a list down in uh, in Alabama at, the, at Maxwell Air Force Base of, of people who are waiting to get Air Force Junior ROTC programs. So if you're out there listening and you have a desire to have one at your high school, then make that phone call and see what you have to do because again, the Air Force isn't gonna come knocking on your door and asking you to take one. Thank you for that. And uh, we're gonna make a bit of a series of this as we're gonna sort of go around the Western PA region and talk to different ROT, junior ROTC programs, uh, find out what the differences are. I'm very interested in that. I'm very interested in how uh, different instructors are leading their cadets. Um, so join us again uh, next week for the Scuttlebutt, uh, where we are gonna be tackling a new and interesting subject about the military culture. And as always, please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell on YouTube. Uh, thank you all for coming on. And uh, we hope uh, that the school year goes well for you. I want to thank Millerstown Pick Apart for their generous support and sponsorship of this program. For Millerstown's hours, direction, inventory, and pricing, go to pickapartyard.com. That's P-I-C-A-P-A-R-T-Y-A-R-D.com. Thank you so much, Millerstown, and uh, we'll see you on the next Scuttlebutt.